Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshe. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again uh, to our Revangelical podcast ministry. I'm so delighted to have you join in with us today. Uh, Here at DFEA, our mission is to share messages of hope and encouragement uh, from the Word of God. Our prayer is that today's episode will bless you and your relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. We are currently uh, studying these 30 life principles that Dr. Charles Stanley preached and lived by. Uh, All 30 of these messages, by the way, can be viewed online at intouch.org. Uh, pastor Stanley was the senior pastor at First Baptist Church Atlanta, Georgia for over 50 years, which is just absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, today, we're going to look at life principle number 22, the second part of walking in the Spirit. I love this teaching on the Holy Spirit. Uh, the technical theological word is pneumatology, uh, the study of the Holy Spirit. And so it's been fun over the last several days. I've been listening to podcasts or just listening to this message from Dr. Stanley and just thinking about my own journey in my understanding of the Holy Spirit going back to my days in seminary. And then as a teacher, as a professor, uh, part of my lectures and my classes were on uh, the person and work of the Holy Spirit, his activity in the life of believers and his activity in the life of unbelievers. And so I've been so blessed just listening. What, what I've done is I just listened to Dr. Stanley and just wrote, typed uh, as, fast as, I, as fast as I could. At times, uh, I would be just sharing with you uh, his teaching as, as I wrote them down. And so I'm giving credit where credit is due. And it's almost like verbatim at times that I'll just be sharing uh, what he shared. And then you'll hear me. I will interject my own thoughts and, and ideas. And I I love to give credit where credit's due. I love to learn from other people. And Charles Stanley was a spirit-filled man. I mean, he had the fruit of the spirit in his life. The gifts of the spirit were operative in his life. And so we want to we want to learn from people uh, like that. Oh, it'd be awesome if you were referred to as a spirit-filled woman, right? Or men, men of God. He's a spirit-filled man. Uh, it would be you would be living according to Galatians 5, 16, which says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, one of two things is gonna dominate us, the Holy Spirit or our own desires and flesh. And so when we're led by the spirit, walking in the spirit, uh, being controlled by the Holy Spirit, not grieving or quenching the spirit, but being filled with the spirit, oh, Man, what a life, what a blessed life to live. And you can live that life, by the way. Uh, This life of being filled with the Holy Spirit is not reserved for some elite Christian or some super spiritual level over there. No, this is for every follower of Christ. Uh, Romans, I think of Romans 8, 16, the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead lives in you, lives in me. And so we have all that we need to live dynamic, powerful, uh, godly lives for Christ. And how do we do that? It's by the Holy Spirit of God, Him living in us and through us. So hop on board. It's gonna be a quick ride as we walk walk through the work of the Holy Spirit. What I'll do is I'll kind of summarize what we looked at last time and just kind of go quickly through these, um, oh, about nine or 10 principles of the work of the Holy Spirit and share. Some of them, I'll just actually read the verse with you. Uh, but others, I would just make a citation or, or note the uh, the biblical verse that uh, this truth is built upon. And so the work of the Holy Spirit, number one, he teaches us. He teaches us the truth, okay? Uh, John 14, 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, this is what Jesus is teaching about the Holy Spirit in John 14 through 16. I call it almost like a theological treatise uh, on the Holy Spirit. And so he will bring to recall, he will teach us the truth. Because remember, the Holy Spirit, he is God. 
He is a person. Uh, he has, um, you know, emotions. He can be quenched, you know, grieved. How do you, how do you grieve um, something that's not an, an animated person? Well, he is. He is a person. Number two, he testifies to who Jesus is. Uh, John 15, 26 says, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, okay, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, he said. You ever think about this? The Holy Spirit never talks about himself. <laughs> he always talks about Jesus. And so you have the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, of the Godhead, and whom the Father and the Son send uh, to this earth for us, the church, who uh, teaches us, reminds us of what Jesus taught us. He is the spirit of truth, and he magnifies uh, the Lord. Look look at the next one. He convicts of sin. I love that John 16, 8, and when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Woo, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that does that. I probably said this last time, but let me, let me just reiterate this. You can't convict anybody and you sure can't convert anybody. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. You can share truth. You can live in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can speak the gospel, and we should do all of those things. But just keep in mind, the pressure's on him. He is the one who draws and convicts and com compels people to see their need for Christ. So he convicts of sin and righteousness and judgment. Number four, uh, he glorifies Jesus. And this kind of goes back to what we talked about number two but he specifically glorifies who uh, Jesus is. And John 16, 14 teaches that. In fact, it says, he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and he will declare it unto you. Number five, he indwells every believer. Ooh, it's what I referenced just a moment ago. I love this passage of scripture. Come on now, Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your bodies, to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Man, to be filled with the spirit, uh, you're living in obedience to Christ. Uh, it reminds me of Philippians 4.13 that you can do all things through Christ who lives in you by his spirit, okay? Number six, the spirit gives assurance of salvation. And there are some wonderful verses, and you think of Romans 8, 14, and 15, which says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. Watch this. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you that assurance that you are saved, that you are one of God's children. Romans 8, 16 talks about, bears witness that we are children of God, that we are saved. What a life, what an awesome life God gives us. As the Father draws us into salvation, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. We see our need for Christ. We believe, we repent. Um, the Holy Spirit comes, lives within us. We are born a second time, right? We're born again by how? The Holy Spirit in John chapter three. What a life, what an awesome life. The Spirit filled life. Number seven, he gives us gifts. And you can read this throughout 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14 as it lists the numerous gifts of the Holy Spirit. I referenced last time that my gifts, that the Holy Spirit has given me to use for the, for the church, for the body of Christ, uh, the gift of the evangelist. I have that gift and it's seen more in my excitement and my encouragement for the body of Christ, the church, to share their faith. Uh, the spiritual gift of service, teaching and preaching and leading and prophesying. I love, these are my gifts. These are what the Holy Spirit has given unto me so that I could use for his glory, the furtherance of his kingdom and the edification of the body of Christ. Number eight, he gives good fruit. <laughs> I love this. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is, and Paul's about to tell us, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, a good translation of that would be patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
self-control. Against such, there is no law. Number nine, he gives you the power to witness. And this is how we ended the last episode on uh, walking in the Spirit and the teachings from Dr. Charles Stanley and how he has blessed us and how he's given us these, these specific pointers that we, can, that we can remember these. I mean, these are this is powerful biblical teaching on pneumatology, on who the Holy Spirit is, what he does, how he operates in the life of believer, in the life of an unbeliever. So Acts 1.8 Kind of brings the two together, right? But you, talking about the church, you shall receive power, dunamis is the Greek word, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. Witnesses are those who declare, who share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with whom? With lost people, with people who don't know the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit within us inspires us, motivates us, and we declare with our lips the message of the gospel to the unbelievers, to those who are listening. And Jesus said, you'll do this in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Wow. The Spirit indwells us. And since the Holy Spirit indwells you, I love what Dr. Stanley says at this point. He says, then you cannot say, I am a nobody. No, you are a somebody. Uh, know who you are in him, a spirit-filled, born-again, blood-bought child of the king. Number 10, he intercedes for us when we don't know what to say. Mm, what, a, what a wonderful, beautiful thing. You know, the Holy Spirit, it says in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but here he comes. The Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So what a beautiful thing that the Holy Spirit literally intercedes for us to the Father when we just don't have the words. He has the words. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. And he can translate that for us. Beautiful thing. So let's not ignore the Holy Spirit, but rather let us rely on him, depend upon him for courage, right? for strength, for motivation, for power, for authority, uh, to do what God wants us to do. We have to rely upon him, okay? Um, remember the story that Dr. Stanley told in his teaching, in principle number 22, walking in the spirit. He said, when I was a seminary student, and he went, and I went to the same seminary. Now, different time frames. He died when he was uh, last year, April 19, uh, 2022. Three, I think he was right at 90 years of age. Um, but he, when he was at Southwestern Seminary, he said he was in his apartment, his very small little apartment one day. And he said he felt the Lord speak to him. And the message the Lord was conveying to his heart was, whatever you accomplish in life, you will have to be on your knees in order to do it in total dependence upon the Holy Spirit. It reminds me of another great Baptist preacher who whenever he walked up to the pulpit, every time I read this, that every time Charles Haddon Spurgeon walked up to the Holy Spirit, um, walked up to the pulpit, he would say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that powerful? Because Charles Haddon Spurgeon is eloquent and as dynamic of a speaker and preacher that he was. He realized he had zero power. He had no power except that the power that the Holy Spirit granted to him. So how do we walk in the Spirit? Oh, that's a good question. How do we walk in the Spirit? Here is a wonderful quote. I love this quote from Dr. Stanley. In fact, when he was teaching, they put it up on the screen. Uh, I mean, verbatim. They, he wanted them to make sure they got this message. And I want you to get this message. It's a powerful teaching here. When he said, quote, to walk in the Spirit is to live moment by moment independency upon him, sensitive to his voice and, uh, and in obedience to him. What a great quote. How often? Moment by moment. As a believer, I'm to walk and to be aware of the Holy Spirit's working in my life, to live a godly life. It is more than, well, pray occasionally, read your Bible every now and then, go to church on Sundays. No, that's not real dynamic Christian living. Dynamic Christian living is living in the Spirit, uh, with Him 
living in you and through you when you're walking with him moment by moment. That is so, that is so powerful. Dependent on him, sensitive to him. And when we do that, we will live a godly life of obedience. This is the dynamic Christian life. So filled with the Spirit, mm, walking with Him, not gratifying the lust of the flesh, uh, but having the fruit of the Spirit operative in our life with the gifts of the Spirit in us and through us, that is the way to live. So let me ask you, how do you walk in the Spirit? Or how do you walk by the Holy Spirit? And Dr. Stanley gave a couple of things here. He said, number one, obey the initial promptings of the Spirit. That's how you walk in the Spirit. You obedience always comes back to obedience, right? Obey that initial prompting uh, impression of the Holy Spirit. Uh, He is an active person. He gives guidance and he will direct you and me and he will impress us. He will say, go here or do not go here. Say this or do not say this. He does give these strong impressions. Some would say inclinations. And I would just say, when the Lord impresses upon you, the Holy Spirit speaks to you, do it when he says to do it. Rebellion is disobedience and that's not doing what the Holy Spirit impresses you to do. Uh, He speaks to us. He speaks to our conscience. (laughs) Dr. Stanley said, he has no obligation to explain why. Because why? Because he is God. And he gives directives, commandments, commissions, impressions, um, and he knows what he is doing. And it is foolish for us uh, not to listen to him because he loves us. And he, he can supernaturally guide us if we are walking with him and listening to him. So how do we do that? Number one, we obey the initial promptings of the Spirit. Number two, he said the Holy Spirit seals us to the day of redemption, and so we are walking with confidence. How do we uh, walk in the Spirit? We walk with confidence. How can we walk with confidence? Because the Holy Spirit has sealed us until the day of redemption. In other words, we know we're going to heaven. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 uh, teaches us this. God gives a pledge and his, has a prop. Uh, in this pledge is a, a powerful promise. And the promise is you are a child of God and you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I remember my evangelism professor in seminary, Dr. Malcolm McDowell, he said, you know, one of the greatest books in all the Bible about the assurance of salvation is the book of Ephesians. When you read passages like that Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 4, uh, talks about don't Grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you have been sealed for the day of redemption. How do you break a seal, a divine seal? Well, you don't. Well, what an awful way to live if you thought, well, if I ascend, then that means I have uh, broken the seal of the Holy Spirit. Look, if you believe that, then you're you're saying some things about God that's not true. You're, You're putting limitations on God, like you're more powerful than God that God says, I have sealed you. You are mine. Jesus said, it's John 10. You are in my hand. I am in the Father's hand. How do you get out of that? You don't. You don't. Oh, but what about those people who say they were Christians and now they don't love God. They have no desire to serve God. They even call themselves atheists. They were never Christians because you can't live that way. If the Holy Spirit of God lives in you, that means you have been sealed. You have been He is the guarantee, Scripture says, for that deposit. He is that deposit for the guarantee that will come to fruition, that will come to fulfillment uh, in heaven. What a wonderful way to live with assurance and with joy. Um, Paul says, resist the devil, but be filled with the Spirit. When the temptation comes to sin, and that temptation will come, Even though we are on our way to heaven, nothing can break that divine seal. The devil will do everything in his power to trip us up, to hurt us, to cause us to uh, give us that temptation to sin. And how do we respond to that? Well, we yield to the Holy Spirit and we ask him to fill us and give us the power to overcome. Um, Remember, we are at war. The devil is there to mislead us and to hurt us. Uh, He knows a lot and he will try all that he can to bring harm and pain to us. But greater is he, come on now, 1 John 4, 4, that is in us than he that is in the world. Set your minds 
That's a wonderful biblical teaching sprinkled throughout the Bible, how to set your mind. We all have uh, a battle in our minds, okay? And so if our minds are being focused on God and the things of God and being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, then we're gonna be equipped to win every battle. The battle in your mind will, the results will be seen in the behavior of your life. Uh, Have a righteous mindset and um, seek to win every battle. Set your mind, set your mind on things above. First Peter 1.13 says, prepare your minds for action. Remember that Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Have that mindset, set your mind on things above where Christ is. Um, And Dr. Stanley says, well, how do you do that? (laughs) That's one of the things why I like his teaching so much because he can be so very practical, right? Where the water hits the wheel, the rubber hits the road. He says, how do you do that? How do you set your mind on the things of God so that you don't go into the ditch of sin and immorality, but you stay up on the, the road and you're walking full of the Spirit? He said, here's what you do. The first thing you do before you get out of bed, say, Father, good morning. Guide me, help me listen to you today. Make me sensitive uh, to those around me. See, so he says, start the day this way with that mindset uh, that you're going to begin your day. And I do this, by the way, every morning. I get up, the first thing I do, and this really kind of sets my mind. I get on my knees and I begin to praise the Lord. I, that's the first thing I, you ought to try it. It's, it's awesome. I mean, you may wake up, you may say, oh, I don't feel like that. I gotta go get some coffee. Look, before you go get your coffee, before you even go to the bathroom, get on your knees and just say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Here I am, Father. Help me set my mind on you and just go ahead and praise the Lord. It is awesome. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. I hope this, this teaching is you know, you know, practical for you, who the Holy Spirit is, relying upon him, acknowledging him, uh, having that, that peace that only he can give to you. Um, the third person of the Trinity, he wants to indwell you. He wants to lead you and fill you, empower you, So choose to set your mind on the Holy Spirit and he will equip you. He will help you live the life that is uh, the life of Christ that is so beautiful, that is so pleasing, that is so attractive uh, to a a hurting and lost world. Surrender and yield to him. Walking in the spirit is to listen to the spirit. Obey him uh, when when he speaks to you. Some more practical teaching, I want to share this with you right quick, is um, something else I do uh, every day. Um, not only do I get out of bed before I get on the bed, out of bed on my knees, uh, I do go get my coffee, I do open up my Bible, and I begin to read. I, uh, most of the time, even before I do anything else, I open up my version app, and I begin to read, and I'm reading the Bible through, and so this morning... I was in, I'm always in Proverbs, right? So I'm reading a chapter in Proverbs, but I'm reading through the Bible. I'm in the book of Ecclesiastes. And so I'm asking the Holy Spirit, speak to me, O God, through your word. And then I try to remember and pray that scripture throughout my day. But here's how I approach the Holy Spirit in my quiet time in the morning. Number one, I say, Holy Spirit. And I got this from Dr. Malcolm McDowell, one of my evangelism professors in seminary. Oh my goodness, in the mid to late 1980s is when I first heard this teaching and I've been doing this ever since. You ought to try it. This will help you. Recognize you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it is a biblical command. Um, Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So recognize <laughs> As, as Dr. Roy Fish would say, you are a leaky vessel, okay? Me, just meaning that, you, you know, you think things, you sin, and you quench and grieve the Spirit. Just say, okay, I recognize I need the Holy Spirit's filling. And He already is in you, right? You've been sealed at the moment of salvation. You receive the Spirit of Christ when you're born again by the Holy Spirit, okay? Number two, repent. Say, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for thinking those things I should not have thought. 
doing those things I should not have done, saying those things that I should not have said. So, Holy Spirit, I recognize to be filled with you and I repent of those sins. And now I ask you, I request that you fill me. Fill my life, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, to overflowing. Fill my cup, Lord. I think about that song. I just listened to that artist. Oh, I can't remember his name, but um, I'll think about it later. But fill, fill my cup, Lord. Fill me up, Lord, so that I can be of, of great use for you today. And then number four, Dr. McDowell says, receive. Receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. Dr. Dr. Roy Fish would say, exhale. <sighs> exhale, confession of sin. And then inhale, breathe in the filling of God's Holy Spirit. So you don't want to live a life where you're quenching and grieving Him, but you want to live a life where you are walking in the Spirit, being filled by the Spirit, enjoying the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's gift, gifts being operative uh, in, your, in your life. Well, goodness, time goes pretty quickly but I'm glad you've tuned us in today to hear this teaching, this biblical teaching on the third person of the Godhead, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One in three, three in one. This whole Trinitarian doctrine is a beautiful thing. I do not purport to understand it completely. I don't think anybody can really understand it completely but we receive this wonderful biblical teaching that our God is an awesome God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Ontologically, in essence, they are all equal, but they have different roles and functions and even submission within the Godhead, which is a just a beautiful thing. So I hope you have enjoyed today. I hope you've, you've learned some things, and I really hope this has empowered you and helped you to live a dynamic Christian life life. If you don't know the Lord, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God living within you, then you're not a child of God. But you know, that can change. As the Holy Spirit draws you and shows you your need for Christ, I would invite you to repent, to say, oh God, forgive me of my sins. And Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins on the cross. You paid the penalty for me. I believe you arose from the dead. And so by faith, I am trusting in you, Jesus, right now for salvation to come into my life Forgive me of my sins, oh God. I want to follow you. I want to yield to you. I want to surrender to you. I want to be your child. And as you do that, as you pray that and call out to God, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And Jesus said, marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again. And that's John chapter three, verses seven and eight. And Nicodemus is like, how does that happen? And then we have the most famous verse in all the Bible. Here's how it happens. Here's how you're born again. Here's how the Holy Spirit of God comes into you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I invite you today to receive Christ. And those of you that know the Lord and you have received Christ to walk with him, to be filled with his spirit uh, moment by moment. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for this biblical teaching from Dr. Charles Stanley. Thank you that we can learn and glean from him. And thank you, Lord, for allowing me to share uh, with our, our listeners today. I pray blessings upon them, O oh God. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, you would just be so real to them and that they would just enjoy the spirit-filled, joyful, triumphant, overcoming Christian life. We thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week. Like the sound of Revangelical? Our audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.